One of the most important decisions a dev has to make when starting development on a new game is what engine the game will be built in. While there are a huge array of engines to choose from, if our community feedback is any indicator, then Godot Engine is setting up to take game development by storm. We've talked about Godot in the past. We even had a Godot Engine showcase. But today, we are going in-depth in response to our community requests for more Godot content. We are Ask Game Dev, and this is why we think Godot will be the next big game engine. Welcome back. If you're new to Ask Game Dev, we make videos to help you learn about the games industry so that you can elevate your games and inspire others. If you're on a game dev journey, consider subscribing. We'd love to help you along the way. Hello. Welcome to the wonderful world of click and play. During the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how easy it is to create your own game just using the simple but extremely powerful tools that come with click and play. During the history of gaming, game engines have evolved alongside the overall market, and the rise of indie games was accompanied by easily accessible engines that anyone with a computer and a dream could use. Of course, in order to navigate these engines expertly, game devs usually had to understand complex interfaces, programming languages, and scripting protocols. Eventually, however, engines with simpler interfaces allowed anyone to start messing around and make their own games or mods with easy-to-use drag-and-drop features. And as any artist can tell you, the best way to get started in a creative pursuit is to mess around. Artists like Picasso and Banksy had to doodle mindlessly on scratch paper before they realized their passion for painting and really honed their craft. Likewise, easy-to-use game engines that can be loaded up and understood by pretty much anyone are an essential tool for inspiring the next generation of great devs. That's where the Godot engine comes in. Looking at the overwhelmingly positive reviews for it on Steam shows that many praise Godot for its ease of use. Likewise, many developers who have made the switch over to Godot from other engines like Unity love the simple, intuitive interface that lets you jump right in. So, let's do a quick run-through of the history of Godot. Originally designed for private companies in Latin America, original authors Juan Linietsky and Ariel Manzur later decided to release Godot as an open-source software, allowing for a community of developers to form around it. This enabled improvement of the engine at a much faster rate than they themselves could ever dream of. They then chose to release it under the MIT license. The pair then positioned their engine for financial support by procuring funding solely through Patreon donations. This made the engine perfectly accessible by cost-constrained indies, with licensing fees, updates, and rights limitations absent when using Godot Engine. There are no premium versions to pay for. You just download Godot and go. Not only can you build whatever you want in Godot, anyone in the world can actually make changes to the Godot source code. This allows clever users the world over to literally create anything they can imagine in the engine. There's no question that as more users adopt Godot, we'll see it expand even more than it already has. And much like how Linux, an operating system with similar features, disrupted the computer industry, Godot may just make massive waves in the gaming world. So, how does Godot actually look and feel? Well, when you first download the executable, you'll find that the program itself is incredibly small, at just over 22 megabytes. Upon opening it, you're immediately right in the middle of an incredibly intuitive interface, filled with template game projects that you can jump right into and start editing for yourself. There's no registration nor account login page, and the engine instantly opens itself up to you. In much the same spirit as Godot itself, the vast majority of the projects you're presented with also fall under the MIT license, meaning anyone can edit them to their heart's content. Diving deeper on the expansive library of template game projects in Godot, the options range from casual puzzle games made for mobile devices to 2D and 3D shooters programmed for hardcore PC gamers. Herein lies another of Godot's strengths. Its projects can deploy on Windows, Mac, and Linux operating systems, iOS, Android, and even BlackBerry devices, if anyone still uses those. All that's missing so far is the ability to port to the major systems like the Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. 
But considering that Godot can already deploy on PlayStation 3 and PS Vita systems, it won't be long until an individual comes along who makes the right sorts of alterations themselves and opens the door for major titles for home consoles to begin to be built using Godot. In terms of adaptability, Godot has been designed to make it easy for most developers to migrate to. Games could be made using C++ or C Sharp, but one of the most highly praised aspects of the engine has to be its original language, GDScript. GDScript is based on Python, which many consider the easiest programming language to learn. For users who are already proficient in Python, GDScript is a breeze to adapt to. One of the major differences between the two languages, however, is GDScript's strict typing of variables, which is better suited for the scene-based build of Godot. According to users who have shifted over from Unity, things that could take days to complete in Unity can often be finished in one day in Godot. The engine's built-in script editor probably has a lot to do with this, with its helpful features like code completion, auto-indentation, and syntax highlighting. While incrementally these tools might only save a few minutes or seconds at a time, when scripting a large section of game, those minutes really add up and end up saving a ton of time. Godot's versatility in terms of what kinds of games can be built using it is another of its strongest selling points. We mentioned before that you'll find all kinds of games in its ever-expanding library, but let's really take a look at what you can do with Godot. The largest chunk of the mobile gaming market is dominated by 2D games. Nearly half of all people in the world have a smartphone, and the number continues to grow. With 2.5 billion individual users estimated by 2019 and the current massive modernization movements in India and Sub-Saharan Africa, the 2D and mobile game markets are sure to keep up their almost exponential growth. For those of you aspiring developers out there, Godot is a great place to start building beautiful and engaging 2D games without incurring the crazy cost that comes with its competitors. Godot has two separate graphics engines built right into it one for 3D graphics and one for 2D, although you can also use some of the features of the 3D engine, such as its shaders for 2D rendering. The 2D engine includes features such as lights and shadows, shaders, polygons, parallax scrolling, particles, tile sets, and more. That's more than enough to make the next mobile sensation. Now, Godot's 3D capabilities are another facet of the engine's incredible versatility, user-friendliness, and forward thinking that all continuously make us marvel at the fact that Godot is completely free to use and open source. Godot currently supports, at the time of this recording, OpenGL ES 2.0 and 3.0. One of the reasons for keeping the older OpenGL ES 2.0 around is because a large minority of Android devices currently on the market can't handle graphics made in the 3.0 version. Godot's team has openly addressed that they don't want to leave the huge population of people using those phones incapable of playing games made in their engine. On top of that, in May 2019, Juan Linietsky announced that the team had started working on Vulkan support for Godot. Looking at the Patreon page for the Godot engine, its main source of funding outside of a small handful of grants the project has received over time, such as the Mozilla Open Source Support Mission Partners Award back in 2016, there are currently over 1,000 backers providing donations in excess of $10,000 a month. That may sound like a lot, but when talking about running an entire game engine, $10,000 a month really isn't much. It remains to be seen if more money will be needed to oversee Godot in the future, or if the fans of the engine will help drive its development pro bono. So, if you're just hearing about Godot for the first time today and want to start on your Godot game development journey, where do you begin? Well, the first thing we'd suggest you do is download the engine and get familiar with it. You can get it at GodotEngine.org. Just click download at the top and select your version. Once downloaded, unzip the file, double-click on it, and you're off to the races. No installation needed. Once opened, click on the Templates tab and start exploring all of the projects available. Some of the projects that you'll be able to dissect and learn from include a 2D isometric demo, a 2D kinematic character demo, a 2D lights and shadows demo, a 2D platformer demo, 
a 3D platformer demo, a 3D kinematic character demo, a 3D in 2D demo. And that's just scratching the surface. Once you've familiarized yourself with a couple of projects and get a feel for Godot, or at the very least see what's possible, it's time to dig into the documentation. Head over to docs.godotengine.org. Under the Getting Started section, click on Step by Step. This is a great place to start. Run through all of the learning modules here. Once you've tackled the list, click on Scripting on the left index, then GD Script. As mentioned earlier, GDScript is Godot's scripting language. It uses syntax similar to Python, but is much more optimized for Godot Engine. From there, you can finish up the modules in the Getting Started section, then start going through the Tutorials section. There's no particular order for going through the tutorials. Select the ones that fit with the vision of your game, or explore and get inspired. Between all of the templates available and all of the documentation on Godot's website, there is more than enough information to get you well on your way. If you're looking for additional resources, here are a few other options. YouTube. YouTube has a ton of Godot tutorials across a number of channels. A simple search for Godot tutorial yields recent videos from a number of different channels, including Games from Scratch, Heartbeast, Thoughtquake, Born CG, Jeremy Bullock, and more. Online Courses There are a number of Godot courses available for purchase on Udemy. Going to udemy.com slash Godot takes you to a best-selling Godot course that's currently rated 4.6 out of 5 stars based on over 1,000 reviews. YouTuber GD Quest also has courses available for purchase on their Gumroad page. And Reddit Godot's subreddit is pretty vibrant with almost 20,000 members as of May 2019. Need help? Want to show off your demo or just talk Godot? Join the subreddit. If there are any other Godot learning resources that you'd like to share, let us know in the comments. Now, let's look at the Ask Game Dev Community Member Game of the Week. This week, it's Velocity G from Repixel 8. Velocity G is a futuristic zero-G racing game akin to the games like Wipeout and F-Zero. The game was solely developed and completed in just 12 months. You can pick it up on Steam today. So, what do you think of Godot? Will it take over the gaming industry in the coming years, or will it stay as an underground engine for indie developers? Are you using Godot now? What sorts of things have you built? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. We'd love to hear how the community is feeling about this little engine that could. For more Ask Game Dev, check out this video on the best games made in Godot or this video on the best free game engines.